Hey guys, welcome back to EVE Online's Alliance Tournament. Thanks for joining us. We're about to watch Exodus Fight Jihad Squad. And I just clicked on an Exodus ship to set standings for my uh, client here in the booth. And the ship that I randomly clicked on said Champion of Kill 2 is what it was named. So I am firmly rooting for Exodus in this match. Good luck, guys. Well, Exodus are big favorites here. They are a really, really strong team, uh, have a lot of tournament tradition, and are just all around good. And they've brought a triple Dominic setup with a Damnation and Oniros and uh, some Damp support. And then they've, the uh, Jihad Squad has brought double Typhoons, an Eos, a Rapier, and an Oniris. A lot of like uh, range control here, yeah. looking to kite with those cruise foons. Yeah, they don't have a very good matchup here against the Dominixes, I feel like. Um, like, they're just going to have less damage, and their control isn't going to do them much good. Like, having a Rapier, having a little bit of damps in the Celestis, and having the mobility of the Typhoons just doesn't offer them very much since uh, the Dominixes are happy to do damage from pretty much anywhere on the grid. There is a lot of range between these teams to start, probably like 70k or something like that. I will also note, I don't have uh, Earpiece like I normally would, but uh, Jossic Thrider, I believe, may have made a mistake upon warping into the arena because he was uh, forced to zero. Uh, that means he potentially didn't warp Ooh, in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's not in a great place. Uh, but it looks like Exus isn't looking to uh, capitalize on the out-of-place Foon, just looking to play their own game. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. I mean, it looks like yeah, it looks like they're just gonna try and burn down the Oneros first off, with the new uh, optimal and tracking bonus that the Dominix has picked up in um, Odyssey. Their ability to project damage with Sentry Drones is really crazy. And Malediction dropping. Crazy. Oneros <laughs> is gonna drop. Yeah, it's gonna go down. I think. Like I mean, it can get some range. Like it, it, it can actually probably create enough distance that the damage will start to fall off some, but. Um, they should have curators out. Yeah, they do. And yeah. I think he's going to have a really hard time staying alive here. I don't think he can outrun this. He's already dropping through the structure. This is a strong opening move, <laughs> as killing the enemy's logistics always is. Uh, yeah, and you can see all the all the damp stacked up as well. Yeah. Malediction down now, too. That means that like the Typhoons don't even have missiles active yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't even seen one missile go across the field yeah. because Foons of the damps on lock. those Typhoons. Whereas, as you see, the Exodus team just has complete reign to do whatever they want. There's no E-War on them whatsoever. Uh, and there's not much they need to do, actually. They just need to sit there and make the Sentry Drones kill everything on the grid, so... Yeah, I think that, like, uh, Jihad Squad is in a really bad space right now. Tournament newcomers, I believe. Uh, really rough draw for them in their first round against yeah, Exodus. Uh, Exodus was in our test tournaments that we ran before uh, this earlier this week. Exodus had really strong showings, especially with his Dominic setup. They actually crushed a uh, Apocalypse Imperial issue all-tournament ship fleet without losing a single ship. So, so far, when I've seen them field this almost exact setup, they have never, ever lost a single ship, from what I've seen. They're not doing anything different here. <laughs> They've killed four ships now, and it looks like they're starting to get uh, to work on those Typhoons. Um, it's interesting that maybe three of the best teams we've seen in terms of tournament history today, Outbreak, Verge, and now Exodus, have all brought Dominic setups. I'm curious to see, uh, you know, as we get later in the tournament, how much more common that becomes and what emerges as a good counter to it. Well, um, what's really important is between uh, this weekend and next weekend, can you nerf the Dominics quickly enough? <laughs> <laughs> I probably should, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I don't think it's I don't think it's unbeatable or anything. I think that uh, it doesn't have the same raw DPS output that some other teams have. It doesn't have mobility. Um, historically, people have tried to do this sort of setup and really struggled with it. And uh, the tracking and optimal bonus is huge, but I'm not sure. Um, if it's enough to make it dominate the whole tournament. I hope not, but uh, well, I guess we'll have to see. The thing I really appreciate about the Dominic setups is it allows both a strong opening start with uh, dropping the right range sentries and then a strong finisher running in there with newts and blasters and finishing people off. It's true. It is one of the uh, super unique things about Sentry Jones as a long range system is that you, you have the option to switch to a short range system late which no other ships can do. You can't bring an artillery Varger and then switch late in the fight to an AC Varger to up your damage, which Dominixes can actually do. So that does make them very, very powerful. If only we allowed carriers in the tournament for people to just refit. <laughs> uh, so I've started brawling, fit blasters. Um, but yeah, like the, t the Foon's dropping. Yeah, one down, second one about to go down. I mean, this is, this is probably the most one-sided match. Even like the Rattlesnake, Rattlesnake, Scorpion, Scorpion team really did better than this. Well, and Jihad Squad's setup was not bad. Like, it's better than many of the setups we've seen today. Yeah, maybe. Like, they had an <laughs> idea. They had they had an idea. The idea was cruise spoons, control a rush team, rapier holds them off, Celestis dance them out, everything else sort of just protects the rapier. But, like, Dominix is just deal with so much. Like, it's very hard to find a fleet that just, like, is a strong counter. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, I think Dominic's right. dropping uh, due to a. I'm sure it's a boundary violation. Yeah. Yeah. That's. <sighs> I wonder if that was intentional or what, but that's. He's. I suspect it was to prove me wrong. Ah <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> He's just posted uh, first in all caps in local. Uh, he is actually the first ship to violate the boundary in the Alliance tournament. So congratulations <laughs> to Sturm Gawair. There's uh, no prize, but uh, you do get my, my a hearty pat on the back. Oh, that's interesting, actually. He, he said, or someone else said, by the way, they're, they're going to work on this EOS, but like we, we always end up saying the EOSs take a little while to burn down. They say good use of the micro jump drive. So he probably micro jumped out of the arena, and we didn't see that. Uh, which brings me to something else. I've seen a couple people in stream chat, which, by the way, hi again, stream chat. If you're wondering what the music is, stream chat, it's Darude, Sandstorm, I'm pretty sure. But um, the reason people bring scrams to the tournament, I've seen some people ask why there's warp disruption effects like there is right now on the Oneros. And the reason for that is that uh, you get the same icon there that you would get for a uh, disruptor for a scrambler. Scramblers, of course, turn off micro warp drives. They also turn off micro jump drives, uh, which means um, they can be really important. They're a good way to tackle stuff. Uh, in this case, they could be a really good uh, way to keep the MJDs from being active. The sentry dummies, you can imagine how frustrating it would be if you spend a whole match burning across the field to a bunch of sentry dummies, then they just MJD to the other side of the field. So the scram could be really important there. Yep. But anyway. And with the death of that, death of that EOS, that's going to be the end of the match. Uh, I just would be remiss to not tell you to go check out the AT forums. We have our first contest of the day. Uh, figure out the puzzle posted by CCP at turn to win a 60-day EVE timecode from EVE Timecodes, one of our wonderful sponsors. Uh, we're going to go on a short break now. Our next match is going to be at 1800 UTC or 1800 EVE time for our EVE players. And that's going to be Noir.mercenarygroup versus Shadow Cartel.